I've been asked several times, and I've tried to keep my hat on it, so to speak, of why we were playing Platteville in such an immediate turnaround after, I believe, 2013 or so, that we were going out of the rotation uh, of the normal uh, exhibition series with the WIAC. And it really started last spring uh, with a phone call that I got um, from Gary Carner, from the commissioner of the league. I think he's here today, still in the back. And he said, hey, how about playing – your brother Jeff at Platteville and I said well Gary that's out of rotation we're post, supposed to play stout and then I don't know how the other seven teams in the in the league would feel and uh I said you I look into it but I want to make sure from your end meaning the WIC that it was okay so Gary quickly got back to me and said the rest of the coaches were fine that they thought for their league it would be great uh in my first exhibition game to have a kind of a brother versus brother flavor to it um and then, as I had one thing, then one of the benefits of being the head coach, you get to choose the dates that you get to play games, specifically those exhibition games. So, as I looked at it and how the calendar laid out, October 30th came to mind, um, which was the day our dad passed away. So, in coordination with uh, the Carbone Center, uh, I reached out to Howard Bailey, the director, who I've talked to him uh, a lot over the past year, year and a half. Um, and we came up with this idea of the brain cancer awareness game. And I felt just from our standpoint, as a family, you go through a lot through the, the whole uh, treatment and uh, everything that goes into that with a cancer diagnosis and obviously the eventual passing of him, that you, uh, as you come to the anniversary of it, there's always a lot of hurdles emotionally to try to get over. So one of the things I've always heard from other cancer uh, people that, are, that have gone through it, that have lost a loved one, that those one-year anniversaries, two-year anniversaries can always be uh, a little trying, that if you can have something positive around that to maybe refocus, remember some good times. So that's how this kind of came about, that we we're going to play this game on the day he passed away and partner with the Carbone Center. And between the Carbone Center and their marketing and our marketing at, at, in the athletic department, we were able to come up with the idea of the – uh, brain cancer awareness game and and rather than us sitting around being sorrowful on that day um moping around shedding tears which will still be some shed but to do something positive and to be able to to help other people bring awareness to this disease but also not just brain cancer but there's over 100 other types of cancer um out there right now unfortunately and to be able to help in any way possible and that was really kind of the root of what our dad was about anyway of helping others and, and that's been talked about and there's some other stories that are coming out uh, today um, but to be able to be in that position where we can use our platform to help other people to bring awareness to this and, and hopefully if it's a prevention a cure a cause whatever that the good can, the emotional support um, the things that can come, come about from this uh, it, it will all be positive and that's what he would have wanted as well you know, Greg hit it right on the head, obviously, when it got brought up and, and Mr. Carner asked me about it as well. I thought it was, a, it was definitely a home run. Um, but then when Greg and I got talking about it a little bit more about using the stage that we're going to be on um, to make an impact. And as Greg said, um, that's what Dad was all about and trying to, to better somebody else's life. Um, and even to this day, he's, that's what he's still all about. Um, so... This is an opportunity for us, um, number one, to, to take a stage to, to help others, um, to show others that you know, there's a support system out there for them and, and to continue to bring awareness uh, to not only brain tumor, but as Greg said, all the other types of cancer that are out there that are impacting people. And you know, even if it's just somebody to talk to, somebody to lean on, um, you know, we've, we've got that support system now that we're building. And, and hopefully this will continue to uh, to build and bring more awareness to uh, to the disease and the fight as well. A year and a half ago, you you guys both told me you really didn't know a whole lot about this disease. How has um, that awareness gone? Do you think? I mean, do you do you get the sense that people are um, more and more aware that that it exists now? Well, I, I think you're more aware of it yourself. You you pay attention when you see something in the news, or you uh, you know unfortunately read an obituary. Um, that not only, like I said, not only glioblastoma, but other forms of brain cancer and other forms of cancer in general. So I think that's the biggest thing is our awareness. Have be, you, your antennas are way up, uh, and you hear it so much more, whether it's more prevalent or not. Howard tells me the numbers nationally are going down, 
um, it's probably because we're just more aware and in, in tune to it. And it, it obviously that word grabs your attention unlike ever before. Uh, so that's probably the biggest thing, that what has changed. Uh, knowledge base has grown. Uh, obviously, I've played Dr. Google, which I've been warned by the real people out of MD behind their name. That's not the wisest thing to do during that whole time. But, uh, you know, the resource we have here at the Carbone Center, and, and uh, specifically I, my point person was always Dr. Bailey, um, to be able to learn as much as possible about this and what the options were, what the treatments were, what the outcomes were. Um, I think the biggest thing you can look at is the, the awareness level and the knowledge level for us has, has grown immensely. You know, about 17 months to the date, uh, May 3rd was the first day that we kind of thought something wasn't right. Um, ironically, the day before, May 2nd, um, we're, Greg and I are sitting in the Cole Center, uh, Coaches versus Cancer, and feeling good to be there to show support, um, but also both neither being impacted immediately in the, within a family. Um, always having friends that have been touched by cancer, but how quickly um, your your view and what's going on can change. Um, but from that that point on, you know, the awareness is Greg hit on it and you know, he's calling me and throwing medical terminology at me and I'm like, do you even know what it is? Um, but it, it's one of those things that you know, we give credit where credit's due. We had a great support system, not only with the doctors um, that we met with and, and Dr. Bailey as well, but even the, the support system that we had throughout the state of people that were kind of going through the same fight. It may not be the glioblastoma, um, but another fight of cancer. And words of encouragement, um, little things that we can do that if we're not doctors about how we can you know, assist mom, assist dad in little ways in trying to continue to make an impact as as we moved and, you know, the knowledge continued to grow and, you know, brings us to where we are today. What uh, what do you guys suppose your dad would say to both of you right before tip-off for this game on October 30th? <laughs> Don't take it easy on him. He'd probably tell him the same thing. Have fun with it. You know, that would be the biggest thing. Just have fun with it and enjoy it. Um, you know, he would, he'll be there smiling down. Um, you know, it, it's something he enjoyed. He went to a lot of our games when we were in Platteville. He went to, he's go, went to a ton of Jeff's games. Uh, he'd do double headers. He'd come to our games in the afternoon at the Cole Center, be in Platteville at night or vice versa. Hit different gyms around the WIAC, travel down to watch us play at Carver Hawkeye. So he enjoyed it. And, and I know he, he would really enjoy this as well. So it uh, and it's for the right reasons. I think that's the other thing. As you can see, the game ticket, um, that's the game ticket for the day, and that's kind of why we wanted to unveil it today. Excuse me, because our season ticket holders will be getting that next week uh, in their season ticket package. So it's our family picture on that, and then this is the pin that we both are wearing today. That um, staff and uh, other game table personnel, things like that, that we'll be wearing. The gray ribbon is the brain cancer color. Uh, is gray so that's the design that marketing came up with and uh, did a great job with both items he'd definitely be excited about today um, if it was anything like when we were growing up and boy I, I would have loved to had him out there but um, he was always the, always the official when we were playing in the driveway you know when Greg would try to be a little too physical you know dad would make the call you know, um, there's always a wrong call. But. Yeah, well, have you ever heard an official that was right? That's the question. <laughs> but, you know, he's going to be there. Um, we know it. Uh, we know it. I mean, he was with Greg last year on that run that they had. Um, it's going to be a special day. It'll be a, a day of tears, but also a, a day of joy. And dad would be smiling, knowing the, uh, the impact that we're trying to make on others. Uh, we're also going to have um, doctors and researchers are going to be uh, acknowledged during that game. Um, there's going to be a thing with survivors and patients as well with acknowledgement that the Carbone Center and our marketing are still working through details of that. But there will be other things along with PSAs, different things about the Carbone Center, cancer awareness, um, you know, really trying to make it a day to really help uh, other people that are going through it and, um, like I said, offer support and bring awareness to to uh, something we're trying to get a handle on.